Hello! In this video, we're going to be talking about coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry asks you to determine values and relationships based on graphical data presented in an XY format. So most of the time you want to be on the lookout for the Y equals MX plus B format and convert to that format if, if it isn't already. No key equations such as slope, distance, and midpoint. So our approach on these questions is, is fairly simple. Make sure that you know the equations. Unlike most of the geometry equations on the test, coordinate geometry equations are not given to you. So you need to know the equations for slope, midpoint, and distance. Second, draw accurate pictures. If you draw a picture, make sure you do it accurately, because if it's accurate, you can actually make a very good estimate as to what a slope or a distance or midpoint is if you forget any of these equations. Graphing calculator. You can use your graphing calculator to determine where two lines intersect, where a line intersects an axis, or a maximum and minimum value of a given equation. So don't forget to use your graphing calculator. And then last, plugging in points. Oftentimes we can determine the correct equation for a given graph by using points on that graph to just plug into the various equations. So the first thing we want to talk about is slope intercept form, aka y equals mx plus b. Most equations will not be given in this form, but in order to solve for slope or for an intercept, you must get it into the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the equation and b is the y-intercept. So if they ask us to graph the line 3x plus 2y equals 6, we first need to make it into the form y equals mx plus b. So first we're going to subtract 3x from both sides, divide by 2, which will yield the equation y equals negative 3 half x plus 3. Now we can easily see that the slope is negative 3 halves and that the intercept is 3. So slope. Now that you know how to get slope in an equation, which is the m in the y equals mx plus b, how do you solve for slope given two points? Slope is defined as rise over run, or change in y over change in x. So we can calculate this with two points by doing y2 over y1 equal, divided by x2 over x1. Now with slope, they're going to often ask you questions about parallel slope, perpendicular slope, and the reflection of a line and what that slope is. Parallel slope is defined as equal slope. So if a line is a slope of 4 and it's parallel, it would have the same slope. Perpendicular slope is defined as the opposite reciprocal. So if the slope is 4, the perpendicular slope would be negative 1 fourth. If the slope was 2 thirds, the perpendicular slope would be, yeah, you guessed it, negative 3 halves. Reflections are not necessarily perpendicular. So when you draw the reflection, it may look perpendicular, but keep in mind it isn't always. Reflections are always the opposite of the original slope, regardless of whether you reflect over the x or the y-axis. Now, if you reflect over the x-axis, it will in fact change the intercept and make it negative. So if we reflect the line y equals 3x plus 4 over the x-axis, we'll get the equation y equals negative 3x minus 4. Good idea to go ahead and draw this and see that when you reflect over the x-axis, that intercept does become negative. The reflection over the y-axis, on the other hand, doesn't negate the intercept. So while the slope is indeed negative, negative 3, the intercept here would be 4. So let's try a few slope practice problems. So if the equation of a line is given by 4x minus 2y equals 8, find the equation of the line parallel, or sorry, excuse me, determine the slope of the line parallel the perpendicular, and the reflection. So first, before we can do anything, we have to get the equation in the form y equals mx plus b. Doing so, it will yield the equation y equals 2x minus 4. And now we're done. The parallel slope is the same, so it's 2. The perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal, so it's negative 1 half. And the reflection is just the negative, so it's negative 2. Now, let's do a little bit of a harder question. What is the slope of the line that contains the points 5, 7, and 3, negative 2. So first we need to determine the change in y by subtracting the two values. 7 minus negative 2 equals 9. Now we need to determine the change in x by subtracting the two x values. 5 minus 3 equals 2. Last, divide the change in y by the change in x to get your slope. So the slope is going to be 9 halves. 
Next major formula you need to be familiar with is the distance formula. Now relax, this isn't a formula that you don't already know. It's essentially the same as Pythagorean theorem, where a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Drawing a, a triangle between these two points, the distance would be, would be c, the change in x would be a, and the change in y would be b. So that equation would then yield the distance is the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. So remember, this is not an equation you don't already know. It's just Pythagorean theorem. So go ahead and draw a triangle, and you can see that the square root of the change in x squared plus y squared is just the square root of the, of the two sides of the triangle. So let's try a distance pr practice problem. So determine the distance between the points 3, 8, and 6, 12. So to do this, we first need to get the change in x and the change in y. So the change in x would be 3 minus 6, or 6 minus 3, which is 3. The change in y would be 12 minus 8, which would be 4. Solving for the distance, we simply square these two values and take the square root, which will yield 5. The square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared is indeed 5. The last formula you need to know for, dis, uh, for coordinate geometry is midpoint formula. The midpoint is defined as the average of the x values and the average of the y values. So again, if you draw a triangle, go halfway across the, the one side of the triangle and halfway across the other, and draw perpendicular lines, you can actually point to the midpoint if you don't remember the equation. But the equation is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So let's try a midpoint problem. So if we're trying to determine the midpoint of the two points 3, 8, and 7, 12, first we need to find the average of the two x values. 3 plus 7 is 10 divided by 2 is 5, and that is our x midpoint. Finding the average of the y, or finding the midpoint for the y requires averaging the y values. 12 plus 8 is 20, divided by 2 yields 10. So our midpoint would be the point 5, comma, 10. So I mentioned earlier on that drawing accurate pictures can really help. And I want to stress that if you don't remember any of these equations, if you can draw an accurate picture, you can often get an estimate for both slope, distance, and midpoint. So be, be careful if you draw pictures. You need to make them accurate if you want them to be estimates. But always, if you're not sure, draw an accurate picture. And you should be able to come up with an accurate estimate for any of the equations that we talked about. And if you're not sure, again, double check your work. Because oftentimes, if you do use the equations and you do them slightly wrong, you'll get a negative value. Uh, and this will allow you to know that if you got solved for a slope of negative 3, but your picture told you it looked like 3, that you should check your work. So it's a nice check in case or any time that you're not 100% sure about your equations. Last thing we, want, we talked about in terms of an approach on coordinate geometry is plugging in points. So oftentimes, you'll, you'll have to determine what equation goes with what graph. So if you pick an x and plug it into the, question, into the equation and solve for the resulting y, that xy has to be on your graph. So you can use a given xy to kind of confirm which equation is correct. So in this problem below, what we can do is take the point 6, 0. If we put it into the four equations provided, we notice that the first equation doesn't yield 6, 0 it would yield 6, negative 6. So that equation doesn't work. The second equation would work. It would yield 6, 0. The third equation would, would all, I'm sorry, the second equation would not work. But the third and the fourth equation would both work, because plugging in 6, the y value is indeed 0. So now we don't know which one's right, so let's just take another point. Let's try a 3, negative 9. Plugging that point into the second from the last equation doesn't work. When we plug in 3, we get negative 3, not negative 9. But with the last equation, when we plug in 3, we do indeed get negative 9. And so that is the correct equation. So again, when you're trying to go from a graph to an equation or an equation to a graph, you can use points. So I hope to see you again in some of our other math videos and hope I helped you out with coordinate geometry. Mm -hmm.